Hi, I'm Reverend Greg and I welcome you to this video in the tutorial series Shaders for Hobby Programmers. In this video we'll continue with learning to blur an image. But as always a short disclaimer first. This tutorial series is mainly for hobby programmers who struggle with understanding shaders. I'm not a professional programmer and I'm not very good at maths, so if you see any mistake in my video or see a better way to solve a problem, please add a comment so everyone can learn from you. In the last videos we first created a horribly inefficient single pass blur shader, improved the performance a lot by blurring in two passes and in the last video improved it further by using the GPU's linear texture filter. Now it's time to add another improvement. Scaling before blurring. This will be a huge improvement on performance but depending on what you want to do with this technique also comes at a minor to great cost in quality. Let's have a look at what we're doing today. This was how we drew with a single pass blur shader. We were drawing a sprite to the application surface or screen. And this was how we drew the two pass blur. We drew the game to the application surface, then do that by a horizontal blur shader to another surface and that other surface to the screen by the vertical blur shader. We also kept that workflow when using the GPU's linear interpolation to take one instead of two samples in the last video. But for scale blurring, we'll now need some more steps. This is going to be a post-processing shader again, so we're drawing the sprites normally to the application surface. Now to scale blur, we'll draw the application surface downscaled to another surface. Let's call it ping surface. Here's the downside of this technique. If we downscale, pixel information is always lost and the final image might flicker because of that, as I'll demonstrate later in this video. Next we draw the downscaled version of the game through the horizontal blur pass to yet another surface. I'll call it pong surface. And here's where the huge gain in performance comes in. If we downscale the application surface by half, this means there's four times less fragments to blur to get the same blur size. If we downscale by factor 1 over 8, this means there's 64 times fewer fragments to blur, which obviously is a huge difference. Next we'll draw the second pass, the vertical blur pass, back to the pink surface. And finally, we'll draw the ping surface scaled up to the screen or application surface. To prevent a pixelated look, we'll again use the linear texture filter of the GPU when upscaling. Even with a scale factor of 1 over 8, that's not too much of a quality loss on a blurred image, especially if we want to blur by a lot, as you will see. So that's the theory. Now let's code this. We won't need a new shader for this. The shader code won't change at all. So let's just copy the object from the last video which was called Object Blur 2 Pass Gauss Slurp. Name the copy Object Blur 2 Pass Gauss Slurp Scaled and place it on the main layer of the test room. The toggle buttons we'll use to set the scale factor are there already. We have prepared those in the last video. In create event, I'll quickly change the info text. Now since the shader won't change, we can keep the uniform handles. And also GUI size and texel size won't change here. But we will need another surface, surface pong. In this test project I also want to dynamically change the scale factor but only resize the ping pong surfaces when the scale factor changes. So I'll add two variables to keep track of that. Surf scale for the current scale and surf scale previous to check if the scale factor has changed since the last cycle. We will use the four toggle buttons in toggle group 0 to set scale factors 1, 1 over 2, 1 over 4 and 1 over 8. And for that, I'll set the caption of those four buttons. And that's it for the create event. But as always with surfaces, don't ever forget to free them somewhere. We already freed the ping surface inside the cleanup event. Now we just need to copy that line for the pong surface. Draw and draw GUI event will stay the same. 
The draw event just stops the object to draw the placeholder sprite and draw GUI draws the module frame in our test room. The real change is in the draw GUI begin event of course, so let's do that now. The first thing we'll need to add here is the scale factor. We're getting that from the toggle buttons in toggle group 0 by using a switch on the function toggle get group active from the base project. This function returns the currently active toggle button in a toggle group. We still need to create the ping surface, but since we're using a scaled surface, we'll need to multiply the dimensions by the scale factor. Now we need to make sure the pong surface exists as well. So let's just copy the code for the ping surface and change ping to pong. And we'll need to resize both surfaces when the scale factor changes. So if the scale factor is not the same as scale previous anymore, we will resize the surfaces. Now we need to create or rewrite the different draw passes. But since it's quite a bit messy to just change and rearrange the code we got from the last video, let's just completely remove all passes and rewrite them. So let's remove everything between the two GPU set text filter functions. As we have seen in the intro earlier in this video, we're going to have four passes. I'll just write the four passes as comments at first to get some structure in the code. The first pass will be drawing the application surface downscaled to the ping surface. The second pass will be the horizontal blur pass from the ping surface to the pong surface. The third pass will be the vertical blur from the pong surface back to the ping surface. The fourth and final pass will be drawing the ping surface upscaled to the screen. So like in the last video we're not drawing the application surface to the screen. We turned off the automatic drawing of the application surface in create event. So the application surface isn't drawn after the normal draw events as it usually would. And now in draw GUI event we're drawing the ping surface to the back buffer which basically means to the screen instead of the application surface. Now let's get the actual code in. The first pass is simply setting the ping surface. Drawing the application surface downscaled with draw surface stretched. and resetting the surface. In the second pass we'll set up the blur shader as we used to before already. We'll need the blur steps again. But this time we need to increase the texel size by the scale factor. Texel size as we measured it in create event was the texel size of the GUI or application surface. But here we're blurring the ping pong surfaces which are scaled down. And this means while we multiplied the GUI dimensions by scale factor to set the dimensions of the ping pong surfaces, to get the scaled up texel size, we'll now need to divide the texel size by the scale factor. Now we'll also need the blur sigma and the blur vector. And then we can set the pong surface, draw the ping surface on it and reset the surface. Now we won't need to reset the shader yet though. We'll need it for the next pass still. The third pass has the same uniforms as the second, except the blur vector. We'll need the vertical vector 0, 1 here. Then it's simply drawing the pong surface back to the ping surface, resetting the surface, and then resetting the shader. And the fourth pass is drawing the ping surface upscaled. As mentioned before, since we're in draw GUI event, the target now isn't the application surface, it's the screen. And that's it already. Before testing this though, I'm going to update the corner info text. We'll need a new local variable for the square of the scale factor. Now samples per pixel is a bit more complicated. 
In the downscale pass, we'll take one sample per pixel of the downscaled image, but we want to know how many samples there is per pixel on the application surface. And that's just scale squared. Then we take 2 times the kernel size times the squared scale amount of samples on the two blur passes. And finally another sample when upscaling. Not sure if this is correct, but I think so. The rest says the same, except I don't want to use string format on better than one pass here. Just a normal string conversion will be easier to read. But now we should be ready to test this. So let's start with no scale at all. And set some nice blur size and sigma. Comparing this with the previous two versions, it should look the same. Now let's increase the scaling to 0.5. And you'll see the blur increases. If we compare with the previous shader version, we'll see a huge difference in blur size, but the result still looks smooth. And the same for scale factor 1 over 4. Now let's scale by 1 over 8. This is really blurry. In most cases you won't need a blur that large, so we can decrease the kernel size. Let's go down to 2 steps. That's a tiny kernel size of 5 by 5 and we still get a really nice, large and smooth blur. And that takes about 8 times less samples per pixel than the previous version and if my math is correct, nearly 70 times less than the original one pass shader. So let me test this on my tablet. I'll leave the scale at 1 and max the kernel size and reduce sigma a bit to get a smooth blur. This shader now runs a little bit slower than the previous shader did. Now let's increase scale by setting the factor to 0.5, 1 over 4 and 1 over 8. At 0.5 I'm already close to the 60 FPS. It's a huge improvement and a large blur. At a scale factor of 1 over 4, the FPS is maxed out. So at a factor of 1 over 8, I probably got a huge amount of headroom left for other stuff and that's an ultra extreme blur. We'll of course get more headroom if we reduce the kernel size to something more appropriate and no, we don't need to bother. The tablet can handle it. Nothing compared to the 0.5 FPS of the first shader version, which was a lot less blurry even. But as I said in the beginning, this efficiency comes at a cost, and that cost can be huge depending on your graphics and the game mechanics. When we downscale the application surface, pixels get lost. If we downscale by 1 over 8, we'll lose a lot of pixels. Any area smaller than 8 pixels might get lost completely. Scaling up again increases the blur but cannot get those lost pixels back. And if an object moves, then some completely different pixels are lost than before, which might cause an irritating flickering. But let me quickly create a small demonstration of that. I'll create a 64 pixel sprite, name it sprite black and white circle and draw a black disc with some white circles on it. Now I want to draw this circle to the game where the mouse is, so I'll use the normal draw event for that. And for comparison I'll also draw one of the character sprites in the base project, just to have something with less contrast. Now let's run this and set up these values. A kernel size of 25 by 25, a sigma of 0.5 and no scaling. So we got a nice blur, a rather large kernel and everything looks smooth. So let's change the settings. A kernel size of 13 by 13, sigma 0.4 and a scale 0.5.
Now we got a similar blur. Smaller kernel, smooth, everything looks fine still. Now we reduce the kernel to 9 by 9, sigma to 0.3, and scale to 1 over 4. Now despite having a similar looking blur with an even smaller kernel, we start to notice a flickering. Easy to see in the black and white disc, but also a little bit in the player sprite. But let's go even farther. A kernel size of 5 by 5 and a scale of 1 over 8. Now the blur lost a tiny bit of its smoothness. Downscaling small kernel sizes doesn't look as good as downscaling large kernel sizes. But what is most obvious is the extreme flickering on the black and white circle and on the player sprite. So now when downscaling we start to lose big chunks of color information and if we move the mouse by just a pixel a completely different chunk of colors is lost. Hence the flickering. If we set sigma to zero and turn off the texture filter we can very clearly see why the blurred image flickers. Some of the whites in the circle just get lost completely. And the player sprite's remaining pixels seem to switch color as if it was just drawing random colors. Identifying the root of the problem is also the solution. You could technically downscale in multiple passes. Instead of going from 1 to 1 over 8, you could have another or two more steps in between. Those steps don't even have to be 1 over 2 or 1 over 4. Of course you'll lose some of the performance gain, but then the weight of that ring wouldn't be completely lost. So in a scene where nothing with high contrast moves around, you could go for one big downscale. And in a scene where the flickering would bother, you could downscale in two or three steps. But that's it for today's video. We learned to use scaling to blur even more. We've seen the huge performance boost we get from it, but also the downside of moving contrasts flickering. If you like this tutorial series, please subscribe, give a thumbs up to each video and add a comment once in a while. I keep repeating myself just for the viewers who don't watch every video. I don't plan to monetize this channel, but subscribing, liking and commenting apparently increases the visibility on search engines. And I'd really like everyone who wants to learn more about shaders to be able to find this tutorial series. Next time we'll write a shader with hard-coded weights and offsets. This will again increase performance, but at the cost of not being able to change the blur dynamically anymore. Until next time.